Now, is that an Irish Italian explosion in your mouth or no? <laughs> mm. So let me break it down for you. The past 10 years, I've been traveling the world, tour managing artists, and showing them the best spots. I know that anywhere you go, you need that solid connect. We've taken submissions from people claiming to have the keys to their city. Now we're traveling the country to take them up on their word. I'm Justin Lazama, and this is Gatekeepers. So we've just arrived here in Philadelphia. It's known for cheesesteaks, the Rocky Steps, the Liberty Bell, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. But today, we're going to do none of that. I'm going to meet a radio personality named Natalie Eganoff. Hopefully, she can show me what's up on a local's level. My name is Natalie Egnoff, born and raised in Philadelphia. This is my city. This is where I was born. This is where I was raised. I'm the person that everybody comes to when they need advice on something in Philly or how to deal with Philadelphians. Sometimes their passion, I think, gets, you know, lost in translation. We're just a bunch of lovers here, I swear. After a day or two, Justin will fit in just fine. And by the end, he'll be sold. I'm sure of that. Hey, what's Hi. up? Justin, good Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Welcome to the Wells Fargo Center. Excited to be here. This is the heart of the Philadelphia sports community. The Sixers play here, the Flyers play here, Phillies play next door, Eagles play across the street at the link. This is where the entire city comes to cheer on their teams. Amazing. I think the last time I was here was for a Katy Perry concert. Really? Yeah. Why? I've visited Philly a lot. It's a little more on the aggressive side. I wouldn't call it aggression. I'd call it passion. When was the last time the Flyers were good? You know, I'm thinking it's cheesesteak, cheesesteak, cheesesteak. No, 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 no. Thank you. Oh, man. I'll take you around the city, show you where my favorite spots are. Looking forward to it. Oh! How about them apples? I know there's so much debate. Anytime you hear Philadelphia and anytime that you hear cheesesteaks, but I'm gonna take you to my favorite cheesesteak spot, Steve's Prince of Steaks. Now, do you know how to order a cheesesteak? Today, let's pretend like I've never had a cheesesteak before. Okay. See if you can impress me. So the reason I love Steve's is that it's just a classic cheesesteak and they do it the best. I'm a whiz with girl, so I get whiz with onions. Okay. Whiz is kind of indigenous to Philadelphia. Right. It's that thick, yellow, delicious cheese. How you doing? Hi guys, good, how are you? Good. Steve! Steve himself, it's how are Steve, you? It's Steve, the man himself. Okay, so you came to the right place for the true Philadelphia cheesesteak experience. That's what I told him. What can we do for you today? All right, I'm gonna do whiz with, it's in a cherry soda, the which best. is the best. So I'll do the American. Um, I think I saw some like hot and spicy french fries somewhere. We have that. I think that's a great start. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the simplicities of this cheesesteak. Yes. And then we can get all of our toppings. They're right, so good. Go in on those. Yeah. Hot peppers. Hope you guys like hot peppers because I love hot peppers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. All right, you ready to dive in? Looks like a pretty good spread. Cheers. Cheers. It's a tasty cheesesteak. Now, the reason I like Steve so much, I prefer the slabs of meat rather than the chopped. I think it holds the cheese better, actually. Do you want to try with the Whiz? Thanks. The Whiz might even be better. The cheese can double as mustache wax. Steve, so did he have like a cult following? Did people, or was it more of a local thing? It's, it was the local thing, and then it kind of became a cult following. Okay. So we're all loyal subjects of Steve's right. Prince of Steaks. So then who's the king? Pat is the king of steaks. Okay. Pat Oliveri is the man who invented the cheese steak in 1937. So he is the king. And when I opened about 40 years ago, and I thought, well, if he's the king, I'll be the prince. And uh, after 40 years, uh, Everywhere I go, everybody knows I'm the Prince of Steaks. It's a nice angle right there. Yep. Oh, amazing. Thank you so you much. Oh, beautiful. Sure. Absolutely, yes. in the neighborhood. Yep. Thank you. He's just super passionate about his steaks. Philly can be mistaken as an aggressive city, but it's also more so a passionate spot. Yeah, and loyal. Loyal. So everybody who has their cheesesteak, they have their cheesesteak spot. Right. You've had your cheesesteak, now let's go do some other fun stuff. Looking forward to see what Philly has to offer beyond these. Are you sweating? Yeah, I got a hot one. <laughs> that one was really, really good. You no, know, you said you didn't want to eat a cheesesteak and you didn't want to do anything cliche, but you can't come to Philly without seeing the first first of our 
dear country. Independence Hall, the Liberty Bell, the Constitution Center, the nation's first pizza museum. The nation's first pizza museum? We're known for a lot of firsts here in Philly. This is Justin, he's from New York. Nice yeah. to meet you, man. Eric. Eric, good to meet you. You know, New Yorkers are a little finicky about their pizza, but oh, I told yeah. him if there's one place that he has to come in Philly, it's here. Yeah. And what's up with pizza in Philly? I mean, it's more of a cheesesteak town, no? Uh, I guess you could say that. Uh, I feel like we're kind of a, a different kind of branch of pizza here. We're not just a mom and pop store. We really try to push the limits on like what can go on a pizza and what can be considered a pizza. If you think of something a little more off the wall, I'd recommend the Kira Tiersen. It's uh, Brussels sprouts and uh, bacon that we put brown sugar over once it comes out. Wow. I love Brussels sprouts and bacon. All right, we'll do it all. I think you're in for a real treat here. All right, guys, here you go. This is the Patrick Maxwell. It's uh, gonna be brisket, mozzarella, uh, provolone, cherry peppers, and caramelized onions. Wow. Hope you enjoy it. It's our ode to the Philadelphia cheesesteak. Looks pretty good. This looks great. This is the Queenie. It's uh, portobello and shiitake mushrooms, goat cheese, fontina, mozzarella, garlic, and rosemary. The Queenie. Here's the Forbes. Our most popular pizza here, it's our pepperoni. Oui. Smoked pepperoni uh, from Vermont, uh, fontina, mozzarella, and fresh basil. The name Fishtown comes from the fact that all the fish used to be imported on Delaware Ave. It was always a working class neighborhood. Traditional hipsters, artists come into an area, developers see the opportunity, and then it just kind of grows from there. It's exactly what happened here. People started realizing how awesome the neighborhoods were. So now we have people from all over the country who are moving to Philly just to live in Fishtown. And how does the rest of Philly feel about Fishtown? There are people who hate it, but it's such a good thing for the city that it's been, as somebody who was born and raised in this area, in the Fishtown, Kensington area, it's been so cool to see. This is going to be uh, the Kira Tiersen, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, bacon, red onions, mozzarella. My favorite slice would be the Kira Tiersen the bacon Brussels sprouts, just because A, I love bacon and Brussels sprouts, B, I've never had it on a pizza. Something very unique and special about the spot for sure. Philly can do pizza, but not at that New York level. So this is the newest thing to do in Philly, it's ax throwing. Seems like it suits Philly pretty well. <laughs> Hi. Uh, good. We just need you to sign waivers and we'll check your IDs and get you all checked in and get you throwing. Okay. Is this a Philly thing? So Philly was the first in the U.S. Okay. Um, we actually have several locations across the U.S. right now. Austin, Texas, Baltimore, Maryland, Durham, and then we have Boston and Cincinnati coming soon. How does one come to uh, want to throw axes? I mean, everyone wants to throw axes, I think, really deep down. They just don't know it yet. True. <laughs> Little rocking motion, right? You're just leaning forward and backwards. You're neutral, weight on both feet all your weight forward. As you come back, you come directly over your head as far back as you can. As you come forward, you're gonna let go right in front of your eyes. It's gonna fly right into that bullseye. You follow through down back behind you. Oh. Ball through is the most important part. I can't recommend it enough, all right? Hey. There it is. There it is, you're getting it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna play a match now, all right? You gotta win two out of the three total rounds, all right? So uh, this is the way the points work. Blue to red is one point. Red to black is three points. Black and in is five points, all right? Two up here, they're called the clutch. The clutch is worth seven. Wow. You can only go for the clutch on the fifth throw of each round. You gotta call it if you want it, all right? It's like your eight ball in pool. Right. Um, and that's the game. All right, team, let's go. I believe in both of you. Let's see some good throws out there. Let's get some points on the board. Let's do it. There it is, it's a point. Ooh, and that's three. Axe throwing in a downtown environment in Philadelphia. 
pretty mental. I don't believe that this is his first time. I feel like he's done this before, and he's just hiding it. I'm definitely the underdog here. Just like Philly. Yep. The chalk was a little obnoxious and unnecessary. I don't know if he really needed all that chalk. Ooh. Okay, you're good at axe throwing, Justin. Clutch! Clutch. Oh. Oh. Natalie, one point to tie, point three to, to, tie. to be our winner. Three to win. That's it, Justin's our champion. Number one, I'd like to thank my family for supporting me and letting me be out here. I'd like to thank my dog for being a dog. Congratulations. Good job, Philly. <laughs> I'd like to thank my hands for being amazing. What'd you think of Natalie's show? Uh, Natalie was exceptional. You know, uh, you know, unexpected, just like Philadelphia. So Justin's been skeptical of, of a lot of my choices. Now I'm gonna take him somewhere at, it's probably gonna blow his mind. This is our next stop. Now we're in my neck of the woods. Lots of local people, born and raised in Philly, come and hang out here. But what's so unique about it, the chef Francesco, he's from Italy, and he makes the best pasta that you've ever had in your life. So an Irish bar that serves Italian food. Yes, exactly. OK. Don't, just don't question it. We'll just go with it. A little confusing, but let's check we'll it out. We'll go with it. All right. <laughs> I want him to have the authentic Philly experience, again, that nobody knows happens here. The chef's recommendations. This one is fried burrata. Oh, so wow. it's a burrata breaded and then lightly fried. And that's his invention. And this is Negroni shrimp. Fantastic. Awesome. And, uh, where's the chef from? Puglia. All right, fantastic. Well, this okay. looks awesome. beautiful. Great. This is as authentic as it gets. Wow, still in an Irish bar. Yep. <laughs> Freaked out. Are you OK? I don't know. We'll be you okay. will be. I'll be OK. You will be. Whoa. There you go. This looks pretty luxurious. Again, Philly's pretty aggressive. I'm going to say fried burrata is pretty next level and aggressive. <laughs> Wow. Aggressive but delicious. Aggressive but very delicious. <laughs> so as a local, how do you find a place like this? Did you know about it from your family? Did you find it on your own? So this place, just because it's been in Fishtown forever, it's kind of locally owned. And then once Francesco took over the kitchen, it went from just being one of the corner bars to one of the better plates to eat in the neighborhood. And then you kind of just get sucked in because it's why would you go anywhere else when you have food that's good right in your neighborhood? Right, Yeah. Good vibes. Yeah. If I lived in Philly, I'd probably be here about once a week. I told you, I've got you covered. So this is the Murph's pasta. This is the, again, another one of Francesco's inventions. It's infused with Irish beer and bacon. Still freaking a, me out. In a pasta dish. I know, one step at a time here. And then here's the manicotti. There we go. Can't say I'm a huge fan of manicotti, but I'm gonna try this and see if it changes my mind. It's a seafood smorgasbord in a pasta. I can get behind this. You have to try this. Oh, wow. Now, is that an Irish-Italian explosion in your mouth, or no? <laughs> mm, I don't know, but it's pretty good. <laughs> you think of Italian food in Philly, you think of South Philly, but right here in Fishtown, in an Irish pub. This Murph's Bar is a very comfortable place to be. It is. It's, but at the same time, super unique. Very interesting. <laughs> so now I have a uh, rack of lamb and tagalini with black truffles, oh, wow. fresh black truffles. That's my personal favorite. So Lisa, how did you end up here? Well, I'm the chef's wife. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Lisa I brought says. him with me back home. So does he cook like this at home? Uh, he used to, but now he cooks here all the time. Oh, man. Yeah, he's a busy man. So the Philadelphia passion even reflects in the food. I would love to spend a day back there with him and see how he does this all by himself. Mm -hmm. Through all the years of coming to visit here, and seeing how Philly has developed over that time period and then coming across the bar like this that you've shown me that has amazing Italian cuisine and you can still get a shot at Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sweet. 
Philly's definitely jumped up a bunch of notches on my chart. It's a special place, and soon the rest of the world will know. Finding a place like this, like Murph's Bar, that's very unassuming, going in, Irish pub, but having a top shelf, straight from Italy dinner, it's still freaking me out. The profiteroles are one of my favorite all-time desserts, so I wanted to see what an Irish pub Italian restaurant can do with a French dessert. And I died. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, trying to understand the whole thing. I'm pretty stuffed. I haven't eaten that much pasta or lamb or dessert in a really long time, but there's always room for alcohol. <laughs> So this is our last spot. This is Bob and Barbara's. They're the home of the citywide. This is the this is the OG special right. yeah. place. This is Justin. Hey Justin. Justin's from New York. So I had to bring him to Bob and Barbara's because I had to show him the special. The special, which is also called the citywide special, is a can of Paps Blue Ribbon and a shot of Jim Beam. And it was started by Rick D. Rick used to book the music here. One night he just said to me, hey, do you sell Jim Beam? I said, no. He said, well, get a bottle of Jim Beam and get a case of Paps Blue Ribbon and sell like a little shot of Jim Beam with the can of Paps, charge $3 and just say that's the special. And the first night we sold out of them. The second night we sold out of them again. And then we just started buying more and more. And now we sell herds of specials. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. OK, enjoy. All right, thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Justin, for coming into my city. I hope I hope I changed your mind about what people think about Philadelphia. I believe in Philadelphia. Do you? I believe in it. Mission accomplished. I believe in Philadelphia. Can I be, like, an adopted Philadelphian? Yes. You're officially a John. A John? Yeah. A Huggy Mouth John? A Huggy Mouth John. <sighs> I don't think I've actually run the steps before. I think I've been here enough, but I don't think I've actually run them. Visiting Philly this time, I realized that the approach of how to visit the city is as important as what it has to offer, giving it a chance and being open-minded. You know, once you wrap your head around it and have that mindset coming here, it gives you the ability to enjoy it to the fullest. And the food's amazing, the people are cool, they really love what they do, they love their town. Oh, man, I was saying I wasn't going to do that, but it's Philly, and if you come here, you kind of have to do that. <laughs> See? <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Gatekeepers. Make sure you hit up Thrillist and subscribe so you get some more of this mustache.